Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we are reviewing films now for 2024. And my second film that I saw th th this year is ISS. It came out January 19th, 2024. It is an hour and 35 minutes. It's rated R. I'm gonna put a question mark there because now looking back, like, it's rated R. Okay. It's rated R. Um, <laughs> and director is Gabriella putting her name down below because that's really long and produced by Blacker Street and L LD Productions. The synopsis is tensions flare abroad the International Space Station when a worldwide conflict breaks out on Earth. Soon the U.S. and Russian astronauts each receive orders from the ground to take control of the station by any means necessary. It stars Ariana DeBose as Dr. Kira Foster, Chris Messina as Gordon Barrett, John Gallagher as Christian Campbell, Masha Moshko, uh, what a great name, as Rorinka Vestroff, Kosh Ronan as Nikolai Polov, and pull uh, this name down below, I'm not going to say that, as Alexi Polov. So I knew nothing about this film. I knew it was rated R, and so I was wondering if it was like a horror movie. Again, I didn't watch the reviews. I just, I didn't, I barely even looked at the poster when people were posting this, and I didn't watch the trailers. I just went into it blind. So I saw this about a week ago and I'm very late to this movie. I actually did not, this was not on my radar. I knew nothing about it. I just started seeing reviewers that I watch start posting their reviews for this movie titled ISS. I had no idea what the ISS was, what that means. I, bleh, I didn't even look at the poster really, like I kept seeing, um, reviewers putting the poster in their title cards, but I didn't really look at the poster. So I didn't watch the trailer. I went to the movie theater last Monday and asked my husband like, hey, can I just go see the movies as if that's like me work going to work basically. So it's more like just putting in the day's work uh, of hours. And I saw two features. I'm enjoying how Tom Cruise kind of said last year how he wanted to see either Oppenheimer, like the same day, go see Oppenheimer and then go see Barbie. And so this is why I did. I went and saw ISS first and then I went and saw Mean Girls. And I'm glad I did it that way because if I had seen Mean Girls first and then ISS, I would have been so dead asleep. I kind of started feeling tired by the end of this movie. Um, it's okay, but I'm already going to get the scoring out there. I'm going to give it like a D, a solid D. It's not a D minus. It's not the worst, but it's not going to be something I ever rewatch. It's not going to be memorable. I don't really have like the same grading scale. I don't have a grading scale set up yet. I'm just kind of basing it on my theatrical experience and how much I can foresee myself watching. First, kind of negative, like I was saying, it's rated R, how, why, what, how? Literally, like, yes, some people died in this. It's more of a survival and very claustrophobic um, feeling because they're literally in, um, not a spaceship, but the ISS stands for the International Space Station. So it's a very small space. They're floating the entire time. And so you feel very claustrophobic. And like the synopsis says, uh, basically World War III happens down below on Earth. And they both get orders. There are three Russians and three uh, Americans. And they both get orders from their teams to take out the other team and get control of the ISS by whatever means possible. And so it becomes basically who is going to get to the finish line first of the missions. And it was really tense, like in the scene where 
they get their orders and we're just seeing the Americans get their orders and Christian who ends up being a very interesting character says well if we got these orders did they get these orders and they look over at the Russians and they're just kind of like looking at them like that maybe it wasn't Christian who said that it was Gordon they do have to, they start taking each other out, basically. Each team starts taking the other team out. And, yes, some characters die. But, again, they're in space. Things work differently up in space. So, when, one of the scenes I really enjoyed when two of the characters died because they took each other out. It was shot so beautifully, that scene. I really, that's one thing I'm, I really liked about it. But, when they died and they stabbed each other, they're in space. So liquid is like, it comes out like droplets, like just little bubbles floating in the sky. And they kind of um, did like a foreseeing of this happening when they're dr all drinking before they got the order to take each other out. And they're drinking alcohol and when she opens the bottle, they, it comes out in just little bubbles. And so that kind of foresaw that like, what liquid looks like. And so when he gets stabbed, same thing, his blood just comes out in these little, little blood bubbles. So why is it rated R? I don't, again, I may just be so used to like terrifier level of R that like, and that's MA. So maybe I'm just immune to what rated R looks like nowadays. But I don't understand why it's rated R at all. But with it being rated R, not knowing anything, I thought we were going into a horror movie. But but it was good. I just think it should be like PG-13. Like, stop saying things are rated R just because li literally a little bit of blood is in your movie. Maybe they cussed a lot. But to me, cussing isn't themes of a, a rated R. One of the things I notated is our main character is Dr. Kira Foster. And my main issue with her is we know nothing about her. She's our protagonist. She's the one we're following. She's the one we're supposed to be caring about. But yet when they get to the space station and you see uh, Christian, especially um, Christian Campbell, holding a, uh, some kind of toy that his child gave him, before he went up in space. And even when the computer starts shutting down, he's like, guys, I need to like reach out to my girls and make sure they're okay. And um, I, I like her actual actress name, Masha Moshko. <laughs> I love that name, it's so cool to say. Uh, I, um, Warinka, I guess is the character's name. But she even is like, oh no, I need to like, contact people down on earth as well make sure they're okay when they get to the space station and giving kira like the tour and he's like oh and if you need to go make a call to anyone down below she's like nope i'm good he was like no one you need to check in on no so basically she doesn't miss anyone down on earth and no one on earth is missing her so we don't know anything about her. I have no idea about who she is. So it's kind of like, why am I invested in, in you? It just, I don't think that was the smartest decision to make for the main character. One thing we do know about her, she has some mice. I believe they're mice. Um, three or four mice that she brings with her that she's gonna be doing experiments on while she's up in space. And when she gets there, um, Alexei, yeah, Alexei Polov, one of the Russians, he's like, oh, I already, already did that experiment, it didn't work. And she's like, okay. But it, this part was really interesting. She brings some mice and they're floating in their little cages. And it shows Alexi, um, after she leaves, like, kind of go towards her science stuff, her science equipment. And then the next morning, the mice have injured each other. And 
she basically says, hey, I'm going to have to unfortunately euthanize the mice. Never really follows up on this. But to me, I think that's setting up the distrust we feel because I, I, in my thought, I do think Alexi did something to sabotage the mice. I don't think they actually attacked each other. I think he did something to ruin her experiment. Um, in a way, I don't know why, because they hadn't gotten the orders yet to do anything, but with his character, Lexi, I was 1000% stranger danger. He's the killer. I know he's the killer. He's going to say he's not the killer. And I was so get away from that guy. That guy is creepy. That guy is no good. <laughs> like bad guy right there, like red alarms, like rah, rah, rah. I did not trust him at all. And I think that's what that whole situation was supposed to do with the mice, was set the tone of distress that we're going to feel later on. So everything's going dandy. Like I said, they all go, well, they don't go out there in the same place, but they all have dinner that night, give each other little gifts. Um, I guess Dr. Kira Foster is like really brand new. No one really knows her. So when Christian gives her the gift, he's like, I didn't know what you want, but I did give you this. And it's some kind of tether um, thing but they all get along and then they all go to this little dome area in the space station and you can see earth and they're all like oh it's beautiful blah 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 next time we see this dr kira is looking through the fish bowl um down to earth and she starts seeing lights everywhere and she's like hey guys something's happening maybe it's like a volcano erupting but then they start noticing it in more spots and more random spots and they're like we need to get away from the windows right now and what basically what was happening is we don't know who started it who dropped the nuclear bombs but down on earth someone either american or russian had started basically world war three and had nuked the other country and that's when they get the orders of take over the International Space Station at any cost. And Dr. Gordon Barrett is, I guess, in a relationship with Rorinka. And she had no idea about the order. She didn't know any, both the women, Rorinka and Dr. Kira, had no idea about these orders. But the men did. So they're the ones acting kind of sketchy sketch. But they send... Gordon out because one of the Russians, I believe it's Nikolai, told him like the something outside must be broken. So they send Gordon out there and he goes and he's like, nothing's broken. And in that time, um, Alexei uh, cuts the wire that Dr. Kira and Gordon are talking on. So basically they're starting to set in motion and one thing I thought was really weird is in the scene is made to believe that Dr. Gordon dies and you believe that for a while and then later on in the movie they bring him back just to kill him again. So it's like, what was the point? The only reason I liked, I didn't, I didn't mind he was back is because the way, that was the shot I liked the most in this was when Dr. Gordon Dr. Gordon, this isn't Saw. <laughs> oh, my husband's gonna be like, you're so obsessed with Saw, you're even talking about it in an astronaut movie. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Okay, so Gordon and Nikolai kill each other, and I don't know, it's just really kind of artistic and beautiful. They, like go to attack each other and when they're like stabbing each other they bring each other into each other it sounds weird but like it's almost like they're hugging and it's interesting because it's literally like a you an american and a russian embracing to kill each other but when they're dead it looks like they're just embracing so i don't know it, I, I thought it was beautifully shot and i thought it was a good metaphor um, I could be wrong about that, but that's how I took it. Um, Marinka ends up dying. 
I don't really know how she died because I was beginning to just go ahead and kind of go like this at that point in the movie. Um, but she died and then that's when Gordon comes back and all that stuff. But I don't know. I was interested in her story for a little bit, but then I kind of was kind of dozing off. But she talked to Dr. Kira and said that they needed to look for a certain thing like I don't know what it was, but they're supposed to look for something. And after she dies, Kira still goes to find this thing and she tells Christian about it. She's like, I guess it's supposed to have um, an evacuation suit, basically. And she's like, well, she said we need to look for that. And Christian's like, we don't have that. And so Dr. Kira's like, okay, she must have lied. She must have been a you know, a Russian and was playing her and she lied saying that she needed to look for it, aka to waste time. So she gets upset, but then she learns, this is such a weird part. Christian completely flips and she realizes he took, there isn't a, a something that has evacuation suit in it and Christian took it. And there's only one evacuation suit. And so far at the end of the movie, we have Christian, Kira, and Alexi still alive. And Alexi, just like how Christian did 180 from we trust him to now he's taking the only evacuation suit. Alexi does 160 of, oh yeah, I'm gonna sabotage your rat experiment. It looks shady and like hide in the shadows and just be this creepy, creepy Russian, the last creepy Russian <laughs> alive. So Varenka, the female Russian, she knew nothing about the plan. She was completely blindsided. Um, Nikolai took the orders and was like, we are serving our country of Russia. We are serving them. And if this is what we have to do to remain loyal, so be it. So Alexi does the 160 of, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt them. They're our friends. And he actually comes in towards the end and helps Kira out. And yeah, I think in the end, they're the only two still alive because Christian died in the dumbest way. <laughs> in the dumbest way. They're making a sandwich. He's literally making a sandwich of quesadilla. I, all I remember is quesadilla. I think there was like mustard. There's a huge knife, like Michael Myers style knife. But when Kira's like, I want to make a sandwich too. He's like, well, there's plastic knives up there. And she's like, <laughs> okay, so you're trying, you're going to try to kill me. <laughs> so, um, Kira and Alexi tag team and kill Christian, um, kind of really in self-defense because at this point they knew he took the evacuation suit. He's going to do anything to get back on earth. And then the movie just kind of ends really dumb. I guess they just either lost the last page or it reminds me of Buddy the Elf losing the last page or just not filling out the last page of how the book should end. So they're going down, you know, the, there's no, everything's like, just not working in the space station. So they're going towards Earth, but they're no longer going where all the bombing is. They're just going towards Earth. And Alexi's like, where are we going? And I guess they just lost the last page of the script because she's just like, I don't know. Bro credits. I just was like, okay, I'm going to go see Main Girls now. Whatever, I'm getting cheese fries. So I'm definitely just giving this one a D. It was not that great. I probably won't see it again. I honestly would probably see Night Swim again before I see this one. Like my sister mentioned Night Swim and I don't mind seeing it with her. So far I've seen every 2024 film alone, which is fine. But um, yeah, so that was my review for ISS. It was interesting and I, I enjoyed that I did not watch the trailer. I went home and I watched the trailer and I was like, damn, I just watched literally the exact same movie again, just in less time. They gave away everything in the trailer. So I'm glad I didn't watch it first because it's the movie in the trailer. 
And there's not much like to hide. It's literally a fight between America and Russia, but in space. But it was interesting enough that um, I didn't hate my time seeing it. So far, I haven't seen a movie that I'm just like, ugh, why did I spend money on it? But uh, of the three, it's already the lesser of it. So far, it goes Mean Girls, um, Night Swim, and then ISS. So, guys, that was my review of the film ISS. Let me know if you guys have seen it. Let me know if you guys have seen the trailer. Because if you've seen the tra trailer, you might as well just say you saw it. Uh, <laughs> but if you like this video, please give it a like. Comment down below. Um, and there should be coming... There should be new movies coming soon. We are ending January. About to go into February. So, that was already my ranking for January films. I don't even have to make a new video for that unless I go and see more January films playing in, Fe in, in February. Like The Beekeeper, that was 2024 and I did not see that. Like, comment, and subscribe and remember to hit that bell notifications because this is just the beginning of the year. We have plenty of more films uh, to be watching this year and I'll see you guys next month for new movies.